we better live. Now, if that any better, we've signed on and come back. If it isn't this time, it's something to do with the signal somewhere, but it's certainly not me because we've had everything on all day and it's all fine. So, we're going to make creme air of vanilla custard inside a custard slice that you see in every cake that we know. And as I said, the first time I saw these was when I spent the summer in Jean Park in France and I saw a patisserie make them and oh, just divide. It's my favourite dessert. You can have it as an afternoon tea cake or, of course, after dinner as a dessert. It's just beautiful and so easy. Never mind, as I said, all this rubbish that they turn you on the television, it got to be a pan on the stove and cook slowly and make sure it doesn't grab. It does burn and it's an absolute egg to make it in a pan. You've had some that I shouldn't be saying at this time of day. So, we're going to make it all in one method in the microwave, and this is going to be how you're going to make your centre. So, you're going to start with, in a large mixing bowl, yeah, and you're going to start with half a cup of sugar. This is where I try to tell you to buy your cup measures, because I don't have the, re the, the sort of measurement without the cup measures, okay? So, you need your cup measures. A couple of quid on eBay. Then you've got three quarts of a cup of corn flour. Don't know why it's all blurry, coming up blurry. Or corn starch. Okay. Then you've got six egg yolks. Just the yolks. Six egg yolks. I'm going to give that a whisk. Use the whisk. Use a wooden spoon if you want. But I just find a whisk cuts through it much easier. It's all in the action. Holy wrist action. See, my friend Paulie always said to me that that was in the wrist action. Anyway, once you've got it to like this, you see that, David? It's sort of smooth. Yeah. Into that, you're then going to do two cups of milk. Use full fat milk. Don't use um, skimmed or semi-skimmed. You know, use full fat. The original recipe for this was single cream. I tried to cut it a little bit. Um, then you want vanilla essence, a round of vanilla flavouring, which I can use about two tablespoons, okay? I have to dive all that because I'm used to doing it. Mix it all together. Then we're going to microwave. So you put this in the microwave full power for eight minutes. Okay? That's the right minutes on full power. Let's get rid of that. Then you're going to make your base dip. Use frozen puff pastry. Don't start making your own. If you want to make your own, knock yourself out. I really have got the time to start making pastry and breaking up cubes of butter and freezing it and chilling it and getting it back out putting more in and folding it. It's just, honestly, it's just too much work and I can't be bothered. You need to flour your board. Use plain flour if you want. Don't start using self braiding And don't over flour your board. I keep reminding you, the more flour you add when you roll the pastry out, you're actually adding to the pastry. You're making the pastry a lot drier um, than it should be. I think it might be, Michael. Could be, well be the weather because I don't know what else to suggest. Is it still really bad? It's still terrible and you said it's really blurry as well for some reason. But we're just going to plod along. And I think I'm just... I think I've just left the camera on myself then for a split second, so I apologise for that. I've not brushed my hair today either. People will be really bothered whether you brush your hair. You've been out cutting logs as well all morning. So you're going to roll the pastry out to about so thick. Can you come in on the table? So if I put my nail against it, you can see. Now, you can bite that um, ready rolled one that's been rolled already for you. It's okay. It's okay to use that, but it's a little bit too thin for this, okay? Because if you take it any thinner than that, you've got no body. Now, of course, when you've rolled it out, it's never a perfect shape. So just 
trim your edges off. So you make it back into a nice rectangle, okay? Then through the middle, try and get either side as even as possible. And then go into four, and then Yes, definitely Peter. Cross Let, again, Peter. Peter said, let's be British and carry on. Well, it's, I always think it's the stiff upper lip of the British to carry on like that. So there you go. You've, you've rolled your pastry out, you've cut it, and you've actually ended up with eight rectangular pieces. That Marilyn said, there. afternoon, Terry. Hi, Marilyn. You're all right, sweetheart. We're having terrible technical problems this morning. It's going like Channel 5 it in here. It does keep there, going blurry like there for some reason. Right, on to <coughs> greased... Uh, 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 lined baking sheet okay once you've got your lined on your lined baking sheet into your oven they will go in the oven for obviously i've not put all of them in because i've got some i made earlier that was just to show you so uh, go into the oven at 125 fan for approximately 15 to 20 minutes okay and again like I always say with pastry keep an eye on it don't walk away like I did the other day um, and go and light the fire and answer the front door and then you come back and they're actually on fire in the oven and you have to start all over again not a good thing to do okay so you've got your pastry in the oven and your custard we're going to carry on with the custard I have got that maybe Gonna come through or not? Right, you're halfway through on your custards. So at four minutes, stop the microwave and give it a little whisk. Okay, back here. Continue it for the other four minutes. I will let you see that when it comes out. I, of course. In true blue Peter style, have some I prepared earlier. So when your custard is cooked, which you're going to see that one cooked because obviously it's only. Hi, Angela. Which Angela have we got? Spain. Hello, darling. Are the kids watching as well? Hello, Mimi. Hello, Owen. When it's cooked, you will end up with this, right? Which is an extremely thick. Um, Scrambled egg. Creme patissier, custard. I use this as well um, with more milk in it as a custard sauce for over pie and things like that because David likes custard on things which I hate. I also use this when I make a trifle. Um, it's, it's really versatile. You've not necessarily got to use this but once it's finished cooking in the microwave you really have got to let it chill. Danny McCall says hello. Hi Danny darling. Oh he said he's right. watching from Mallorca. Mallorca? Mallorca. You're in Mallorca or Mallorca? Which one? Mallorca. M-A-L-L. -L. Oh, the cheaper one. <laughs> the copper said afternoon. Good afternoon, Dibble. I used to live in Mallorca, Danny, when I was a kid. That's where I went to school. Just outside Parma. I'm very international, you see. Right, so when this custard, we're rambling, aren't we, today? Well, this custard's cutlets in the microwave. When I can get this saran wrapped, I won't do it myself. I'm going to show you a little bit. With that. I'll just check the custard. Right. If you want to come through, David. As you can see, that is now... Thick. Yeah. Completely cooked out. <laughs> Make sure you have cooked it because otherwise you'll get a, a residue of sort of flour in it. The copper said save him a slice and he'll have it with coffee later. Okay. Cut a piece of saran wrap while this is boiling hot. Be careful with your hands and lay the surround wrap directly on top of the custard, like that, okay? And
and then leave it to cool. If you don't put the surround wrap on top, you will get a skin and you don't want a skin on it because obviously you're not going to be able to fill it and you're losing half of it. So if you put the surround wrap directly on no. top of it, that <coughs> completely stops the skin. Okay. So we're going to construct them. Now, over years and years and years of messing about with these things and trying to spread it with a pellet knife and a, a, a every different knife known to man, I discovered it was too much work and I found out the easier way to do it is a piping bag. So I've got this set with a 12 gauge plain nozzle, not a star one. If you've only got a star one, that's fine. Or if you've not got a piping bag, you know, do it with a knife. It's just, I like to teach anything for the easiest, you know, it's not the school of cookery, it's, you know, it's Stepford. Don't you cut them in half? No, I don't. Don't you slice them in the middle to get... No, that's the top and that's the bottom. Oh, that bit thick, any? No, not when it's washed down. No, it's not when it's... Who's, the, who's the cook in here? You or me? Pipe down. Right, take your first one and just gently, not hard, gently. Each piece will be a top and a bottom and you just want to slightly, with a little bit at the back of your hand, press. And then across, lose your crumbs and on. Can okay. I just, why can I just say why can't I just turn it over like that? Because that will rock. Now oh, you right. now you've answered. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah. Just checking that you know your stuff. Oh well of course I know my stuff, darling. I've got your card now, Ducky, put it that way. Okay, cross with your pastry cream, lose your crumbs. Yeah, Peter. Peter what? You tell him Terry said. Exactly. Keep moving them along. Yeah, Always you... just try and lose the crumbs. It just makes it nicer and tidier. Okay. They've got to be iced off now because obviously it has a nice um, sort of fondant icing on the top, doesn't it, when you get them from the shops and everybody wants them to look that way. Giles, I don't like custard, like, I don't like the custard, I only like them with cream. Well then that's not a Napoleon slice, darling, that's something totally different. No, Giles said I need, to, I need to do a demo, that's what I'm telling him. Oh yeah, Jake, oh you don't like them, no. yeah. David doesn't like them at all because he doesn't, I can't understand why he likes the custard in a trifle and he likes the custard over other things but he doesn't like it in that. What I do is I make four like that and I'll make another four um, without the, the, um, the, the custard in and I make them with whipped cream in for David. You'd think I had nothing else to do in life than make two of everything for people. But there you go. Right, so we're going to make some glaze icing for the top, <coughs> which is the simplest thing ever. I didn't bring a service plate in, did I? I don't know. It's lucky when you have a house like this and everything's to hand. How gorgeous. Okay. So, for this I usually use two teaspoons, just because they're out and about. There's no measure for this. You're going to use um, confectioner's sugar, um, icing sugar. Okay. So. All that for them four. That's a quarter scoop, and I've just, you know, put a bit. Then you want literally tap water. Okay. Don't sling it all in in one go, and mix gently because otherwise you end up with a cloud everywhere and if it's too runny it will just literally run off them if it's too hard you can't spread it so you start with a tiny little bit of water okay and see david's just said all that for those and once you put the water in the actual icing sugar goes just, down it just seemed like a lot of yeah. icing sugar for all those four things yeah well it's not need a little bit more. 
So has everybody caught this so far? Because we've sort of taught three different um, things. We've done a little pastry demo. We've yes, Giles, I do have jam in mine. Yeah, with the cream. Yeah, there's cream in them. Yeah, I had a little bit of jam, usually homemade. A bit more water. I'll show you the exact consistency of this. You see, when I first made them, I used to make it so runny and just pour it and just used to go everywhere. And again, you don't want them to look, you know, like they've come out the cake shop window. They're supposed to look like they've come out of your house and you've made them. Because nobody will believe you if they look absolute. Every single one is perfect. So you've got this to sort of that. It's running, but it's, it's grabbing the spoon, okay? And then put it gently through the centre. Try and get it to come to the edges and let it run. I like it to run down the sides a little bit, not immensely, but if it doesn't, I don't think it looks as cute. Then, do the last one. Thought you'd like him, Sam. Which Sam? Dude, Tesco Sam. Oh, it's Sam. Hello, my darling. How are you? You all right, love? Yum, yum, she said. Right, I'll show you now how to camp them up a little bit. Okay? But, you know, if you're going to do them, you can just scoff them down, stick them on a, a, you know, a dessert plate each. She doesn't clean it up herself, she has somebody in. Mm. Wouldn't you like to know? Right now, what I forgot to get, can you just pass me off the bar there um, a cocktail stick for in the, the little thing here, the cherries? If you could, and trust the phone to start ringing. The maid's got it. Oh, good. See, when there's staff, it's so easy, they just answer phones. Right, take some food colouring, any food colouring you want, you know. Charles said, I bet a drizzle of raspberry puree over the top would look great. Do you think? I don't. Right, take a cocktail stick, yeah. dip it into um, food colouring of any description you want and then draw two lines. Cross the top of each one, as you've done that, then go that way, and you've feathered the icing, and there you go, vanilla slices, Napoleon slices, whatever you want to call them, wherever you come from, everybody calls them different things, as hoity-toity as I think I am at times, it's a vanilla slice, and I love a vanilla slice. Love, 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 love. Are you going to eat one now? No, I'm not going to eat one now at all. I might like making them, but I don't eat them all, as everybody thinks. So, we'll have some coffee and see if you've got any questions. Because nobody asked any questions, I'd be like... Jim Nixon wants, has got a question. I want to know yeah, if, if I can cook too. I'll let you answer that. Can Davy cook? Yes, he can, actually. Um, quite simple, but he can cook. I'm not saying he's simple, but he can cook. Um, but I would say in all the years that we've been together, it's a long time, um, he's cooked two meals for me. And the only time he really cooked heavily was about two years ago when I had my bigger operation. And obviously I was bed fast and all the rest of it. And he cooked things because I didn't want food, I just wanted desserts. So we'll go through to the drawing room. Um, and I only wanted desserts, so he actually cooked desserts from my cookbook. 
um, and followed them and they worked and I was obsessed when I was poorly it with um, syrup sponge pudding steamed syrup sponges I wanted with cream all the time with everything I wanted to eat um, and he did make them for me and I used to lie on the sofa and then shout through to another room because we lived in a different house then and the kitchen was a lot further away and I used to have to shout he'd say where's the flour it's in the cupboard where's the sooty it's in the top shelf where's the sooty it would have been easier for him to bring everything in the living room and do it myself so to answer your question Jim yes he can um, but he doesn't. I don't expect him to cook, to be honest and truthful, if he's been at work all day. Dinner's on the table at 5.30 and he has his dinner and he does like every man should do. He puts his slippers on and he has his little drinky and he watches the television. So he doesn't have to cook. Right, Lee, Lee said... Which Lee? Could Lee, Lee B. Mm -hmm. um, could you use a dessert fork if you haven't got any cocktail sticks? Um. No, <laughs> no, don't. I know what you. I know where your theory is in that, Lou. That you stick the dessert fork in, you've got the four things. No, I'd use a skewer if I've not. Well, got you could, I suppose. Could you, you just wouldn't no, you come can't. out? I tried it, and it does go everywhere. Um, the other thing you could use, which I suppose would work, is a metal skewer or a knitting needle or a. You need something with a sharp point, basically, or the end. The very tip of a sharp knife would probably do it but come on for a cocktail day a match find a match get out on the street find a tab end there'll be a match near it shouting it down amisa amisa amia how oh, much Mia. how much um corn flour no it wasn't corn flour how much um icing sugar did you use again you said he missed that right well the icing sugar i just eyeballed it you watch the rerun back I sort of put there, that was a quarter scoop I was using to scoop it out. So I used about five, so it's like a cup and a quarter, and trickled the water. It's one of those things you can't say it's two ounces of icing sugar and so many mils of water. It doesn't work. You've just got to drip the water in until you get, if you're not made enough of them here, make some more. Do you know what I mean? If you make too much, you've made too much. What have you wasted? Michael's got a request. Can you do Manchester Tart soon? Yes, I'll get round to Manchester Tart, darling. I've got a list a mile long of stuff we're trying to get through before we start doing stuff for Christmas. But I will do the Manchester Tart for you. To be honestly truthful, your Manchester Tart is a doddle. I can talk you right through that now. You did blind baking pastry for the lemon meringue pie. So you bake your pastry case blind, spread it with jam on the bottom, make the vanilla custard you've just seen me make, and whilst it's still hot, tip it into the pie crust and let it cool in there with a piece of plastic over. The minute it's stone cold, sprinkle with um, desiccated coconut on the top, it's Manchester tart. That's it. You, you've seen it made, but in different stages without me actually putting it on together. So, but I will try and do it on, on air for you. Tom Bradshaw said, can you, get, can you tell Alan White to get his finger out and start baking? Tell Alan White to get his finger Well, why can't you start baking, Tom? Are there a couple or something? Well, yeah, well, why can't you just do it? Keep getting Alan to try and do it. And I did put the, co the cookie recipe for the um, uh, the ginger cookies. I knew it was there when you kept saying it wasn't. Anything else? Yeah, Peter, Peter said, in a few weeks, can we get an extra video on how we could decorate a Christmas tree? Yeah, we're going to do... Um, I'm going to do not live videos, but I'm going to do... Uh, stage by stages with the tree uh, we have everything up by the 1st of December so as soon as Thanksgiving is over and we've had the family of Thanksgiving dinner um, which is the what day does it fall on this year I can't remember towards the end of November it's I can't think towards the end of November I can't remember what date it is um, it's the third uh, Thursday in November so we do it we have Thanksgiving as soon as Thanksgiving is over the moment they've left the house then this lot gets stripped because there's a lot of work before you see um, the finish of it because obviously every ornament, every picture frame, every cushion, everything is taken out of the house for all the other stuff to come. Um, but it will already be here from the storage. It's going to all be hidden away when people arrive. There is a lot of it. But I am going to talk you through. I'm going to do things like the tree of where the placement of things should go. You know how to decorate a tree. Everybody does. And it's a personal thing. But there are certain ways of doing certain things to give a placement. Um, and I'm going to do a fireplace mantle with you. And then when the house is all finished, I'll take you around the house and do a tour. And talk you through certain things on a live feed. And you can ask 
um, questions on that of how it's done I will show you I don't I don't believe in all this oh don't tell people what you're doing and have it all as a surprise you know if you want to copy it great because I didn't you know every idea isn't mine personally I have got them off other people as well so yeah we'll get Chris Paul said you put bananas in Shh, Manchester tart slip. no I don't I've never heard I've, now I was just going to say I've never heard of bananas in a Manchester tart but I have heard of that but the one I had no it was pastry jam Custard, coconut, that was it. I've never had it with bananas in, but that does sound lovely. Lee said, are you doing any Thanksgiving live recipes? As he, Is it here or she? I don't know. As I've got an American friend, I'd love to give a little bit of this home. Yeah, we'll do. Here in the um, UK. The nearest one to Thanksgiving, I will cook some of the stuff. Um, I'll do... Um, I'll, I'll, well, I will be making um, the pumpkin pie that will be one of the shows so you'll get to see how to make pumpkin pie and then i'm also going to show you because you all should have been making your cornbread by now and you should be freezing what you're not using and i'm going to show you how to make cornbread stuffing with the leftover cornbread that should be in your freezer so that will be one show in entirety okay so you'll get things for thanksgiving but thanksgiving dinner it, it was lee that asked that wasn't it yeah yeah thanksgiving dinner is is christmas dinner Basically, it's just you remove certain things and add other things like candied yams and stuff like that, you know. And we do the same. We do candied yams at Christmas as well because we like them. Jim said, can you tell us how to cook the perfect chips like the crinkle ones you cooked for, for me the other night? My God. Right, well, chips I cooked twice. Uh, Thanksgiving's 22nd of November. It's the 22nd, thank you. Um, Cy Cybris? Cy yeah, yeah, from Blackpool. Hi, uh, darling. Okay. Um, I always cook chips twice i do two dips okay um i will tell you that way first i cook my potatoes with my i peel them very badly as everybody noticed because i cannot peel a potato and i don't intend to be starting to see through skin i couldn't be bothered um and i cut them with my crinkle cutter thing which is about 30 years old and as everybody's now put on facebook you can still buy them so i'll get them um, and then i soak them in water for about three hours to take a lot of the starch out dry them Dip them in hot fat, take them out, let them go stone cold, and then re-dip them. But, I have to admit, David, as much as he loves chips like that, doesn't get them like that anymore. I do all what I've just said, but there's no frying involved, and they go in an air fryer. I have to admit, we have an electric air fryer, because I'm trying to cut, you know, as much things at our age as we possibly can. So, you know. Anything else? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. If you're not on... Um, the YouTube channel, by the way, make sure you do join the YouTube channel. The the um, the the ad for it is on my page, and go to it and click onto it, and then click subscribe because then the Christmas videos we were talking about, you'll see those on there. They won't be on Facebook, okay? They will go directly to YouTube. So you need to be on there, and you get like a little alert coming through from that. While I've also got your attention, before I say anything else. The end of this month, I have a big show, which is an audience with Terry Fox, where you get to ask me questions. We've taken over Berry Football Club in Berry, um, and it's a complete charitable show. Every single penny that's raised goes to Berry Hospice. The ad for the show is on my page. I please would love you to book tickets and come along. We need to raise money for Berry Hospice as much as we possibly can. So everybody, all the sound techs and the lighting people, have all given their time absolutely free. We've got a fabulous celebrity auction with football memorabilia and things that people have donated, restaurants with meals for two, and lovely, lovely things. Um, so please, the, the advert is on my main page. Go to Terry Morgan Fox page, and on the page you will see the advert for it. Open the picture big, and on the poster you will see two names, Maggot and John, ring either of the numbers, and they will sort you out with tickets. It is a ticket only event, okay? If there are any tickets left near the time, I will release that on Facebook, probably on the day. But if you want to be sure of the table, because it's a table seated event, make sure you get there. And you get to ask me questions, you know, and you get to meet me properly and talk to me and you can ask me things while I'm on stage. So it all goes like that. And I'm sure I'll be wearing something devastatingly gorgeous, as you can well imagine. Lee said, do you ever come near Devon for shows? As I can't always get back home to the north. Do I ever come near Devon? Only if I'm asked. I love Devon. Take me down to Devon in your car. I used to love that song. Um, Jim, yeah, get somebody to ask me and I'll come to Devon. Jim Nixon said. Yes, Jim. 
I don't have an air fryer. I didn't know if they were a gimmick. I'll buy one, thanks. <laughs> no, well, do you know, Jim, I'll be honest with you, true before, this will be the gospel truth. I am not a gadget person. I can't stand gadgets that do things. You remember like we used to do in the, in the 70s and 80s, your kitchen units would be littered with gadgets while a toaster sandwich <laughs> I don't have any of those anymore. I am obsessed with things like food processors and mixers because I use those all the time. So air fryers, I did say the same thing. I said, what a load of old cod's wallop. It's not going to cook properly. It's not going to do this. I should do an air fryer demo because I am obsessed. And my air fryer... We actually bought for my daddy before he passed away, so that's how I've ended up with it. And I thought, oh, I'll just give it a go, you know. And I played with it a bit. And then I've just tested it with other things. And you can actually bake in it as well. You remove the centre thing, and I've baked scones in it. When we were having the kitchen done and I couldn't get to the ovens, I actually baked in it, and the scones came out absolutely perfect. So I think it's a fabulous investment. And uh, the, again, good online. Look online first. Don't just run out and they come down so much in price. I remember when I paid for that one, it was like 130 quid. Um, and I've seen them now for 30 and 40 pounds, which is absolutely amazing. As it's quite a big one, um, I could probably do with an even bigger one. It's not big enough if I've got more than, say, three people that I want to cook something for that's fried. But I, I do basically use it for anything you would fry like chips. Sausages come out of it amazingly, I've got to say. Um, uh, croquet potatoes, things like that, I use it for that. So, But I deal do still fry. It doesn't do fried chicken, by the way. That doesn't work. It just all falls apart and it's hideous. So, anything else? Yeah. Anthony's come up and said, um, house is rotten. I don't know if he's on about his own. Anthony McWilliam. Well, it is Anthony, you see, because you know what I'm like? I don't like cleaning and the staff are not up to it anymore. But there again, if my house gets ever as filthy as yours is, because it's walking, and you're the talk of the wash house. So if I was you, I'd get off Facebook and get your rotten windows done. You and that Tony Condis Lewis in bleeding uh, Liverpool as well. His windows are filthy. Your house is rotten. My God, I work my fingers to the bone in here. Jim, Jim said thank you. You're welcome, Jim. It's really a good investment, honestly. I think it's fabulous. And obviously we don't eat fried potatoes very often. I can't eat potatoes at all because I'm allergic to them. So you never see, um, when I sort of photograph dinners and things, you can actually see one, one platter's totally different because I can't eat potatoes. I can eat sweet potatoes, but any other potatoes make me sick. So I can't have them. There's too much carb and too much starch and it just doesn't work for me. I don't do solids very often. Anyway. Oh, thanks for that, Peter. Peter what? Peter's put on air fries at B&M. They're only forty nine ninety nine. That's fabulous. But there you go. Peter's just said forty nine ninety nine in B&M. Bargain. I've actually seen it cheaper than that, though, Peter. And I can't think where. I saw one for 35 quid the other day that was advertised. It might have been on one of those little leaflets or something that they keep putting through my door. Don't. Rubbish coming through my door. So... If um, everybody up to snuff with your vanilla slices, I want you to make sure you take photographs and post the photographs of what I've shown you what to do. Um, and if you're that adventurous to make your own puff pastry, I'd love to see photographs of that. Because if you saw me make it, I get it in, in the end in a bowl and I cob it because I, I, it's just too much fussing about. Any other questions? No, not at the moment. So one more time, I'll just remind you about Berry. Um, go to my page, look for the poster, An Evening with Terry Fox at Berry Football Club, the end of this month, tickets only, available through the numbers that are on the ticket, all charitable, every penny of the proceeds, everything, nobody is on salary, nobody's taking any money, every penny is going to Berry Hospice, and I really, really want to fill this, because I want to make this the biggest gift I can give them at this time of year, and let's face it, hospices do need the money, and it's something that not you know maybe not you personally but it affects everybody in this world at some point of their life a hospice will touch your life so please um just try and be a bit charitable come and see me come and ask a question as long as it's not a cooking one we're not cooking that night you know mind you don't know we mind so is that it is everybody done and finished so next week's show I will post what we're going to make on that. I hope to see you all very soon. And thanks for looking in. Don't forget, demand perfection 24-7. The only way to live. 
from me, Terry and David. Have a lovely Sunday and I'll see you later. Bye. I can smell burning. You've left them in the oven.